All right, so you guys at home, all you're doing is... That part of it. So we're reviewing what we did on Friday. Very good. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. All right, here's what I want you to do in class. We're just going to raise our hands, but at home. All right, which one did you write? All right, out of these six, which one did you write? And so. on the thing, make that smaller, which of course it's not letting me do, every time I touch it, all right, perfect, I get six there, there we go, all right, so, take a look, all right, Those of you at home are just entering what you did in the poll, all right? Can I take a look? How many of you have number one? Anybody in here have number one? All you got to do is raise your hand. How many have number two? How many have number three? How many have number four? How many have number five? I'm going to have, oh, I see another one there. I'm going to have number six. So three of you are either afraid to answer. Are you going to get one of those? You said five? Okay. How are we doing at home? Oh, we got a nice breakdown. Wait a minute. Come on, people. There's 20, there's not, there's 18 of you at home. Come on. There we go, we're switching. We got seven and three. The other nine of you, what are you eating? You're eating oatmeal with your, there we go, we're moving eight and four. Where's the pole? Here we go. Eight and five. How's everybody doing? Good? Feeling good? Wait. Not fatigued at all? All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, basically, they're all correct. All of them. Each one is correct. And here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. Okay? And I want to make sure we understand this. Okay? And I want to make sure we understand this before you check the homework solutions of this later in the week. We will deal with this later in the year when we deal with probability, but the fundamental counting principle says if event M occurs in M ways and an event N occurs in N ways, so this should be event, then event M followed by event N can occur in M times N ways. Example, if you have five choices for dinner and three choices for dessert, 
you'd have how many choices for meal, assuming you must use one of these? 50. All right, all it is is multiply. All right, so when you start this, okay, when you start this, okay, I'm going to go back to the diagram. We'll go back to this. All right. If I look just at the triangle on the left, so I'm just looking at that triangle on the left. All right. How many different choices do I have for the first letter I pick? For any triangle? Three. Okay? So we have three choices for the first vertex. That makes sense? We can pick anything we want. Now, you can't pick the same vertex twice. So this is called with re without replacement, which means you don't put it back in. How many choices do you have for your second vertex then if you've already picked one? How many are left? Two. Good. And then finally, how many choices would you have for your last vertex? One. Make sense? Because that's without replacement. So the total number of choices is three times two times one, which is? So basically keep this in mind as you go through this. There's six different ways to name your similarity triangle. Okay? And all of which are correct. And all of which are correct. Everybody good? All right. So here's what I wanted you to do. Take a few minutes. Complete the following extended proportions with the side lengths of each triangle. First one would be short leg over long leg. Next one would be hypotenuse over long leg. Last one would be short leg over hypotenuse. All right. So use that diagram. Complete the following extended proportion with the side lengths of each triangle. If you are struggling because triangle ABD is isosceles, you can redraw it. You can redraw it to scale if you'd like. All right? You can redraw it to scale if you'd like. Complete the following extended proportions with the side lengths of each triangle.
All right. Everybody understands there's three similar right triangles in the diagram. Wait, good. Okay. Now, in any right triangle, unless it's isosceles, you're going to have a short leg, long leg, and a hypotenuse. All right. So I'm going to call this triangle over there one, that triangle over there triangle two, and that triangle triangle three. Triangle one represents the one on the left. Triangle two represents the one on the right. And triangle three is the whole thing. Good? All right, so if I look at triangle one and I redraw it, okay, which is the short leg in triangle one? CD, correct? If I look at triangle two, which one's the short leg? AD. And if I look at triangle three, which one's the short leg? AB. If I go back to triangle one, the long leg would be DA or AD. If I look at triangle number two, it would be CD or DC. And if I look at the entire triangle, the long leg would be AC. Okay. Could they all be flipped and you still be considered correct? In other words, could all my ratios be flipped? Absolutely. It makes could the letters be switched as well since it's the same? Yeah. Okay. Everybody good. Now, if I go back and do it with the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse of triangle one would be AB. The long leg of triangle one is AD. The hypotenuse of tri triangle two is AC. The long leg of triangle two is CD. And the hypotenuse of the entire triangle, triangle three, would be BC. And the long leg would be AC. All right, and then if I did short leg over hypotenuse, BD, AD, AB, hypotenuse would be AB, uh, AC, and B. All of which would be considered correct, okay? So I reinforce that because on Thursday, if you see something that doesn't look like your answer, you have to take note. All right, you have to take note. So on Thursday when we come in, the first thing we're going to do is go through all the homework, and you're going to spend a little time making sure that you're either right or wrong. All right? We're not you, when we go over the homework. So my, my fear is this. We're going to go over the homework because this homework isn't tonight. This is 7.4. 7.3 is just AA, SAS, SSS, and indirect measure. This is the hardest part of the whole thing because keeping everything straight is hard. So you're going to do, we're going to still practice these now in the notes. So we haven't done that yet. We've only defined this so far. Okay. So we're going to go through practice problems now. Then you're going to do homework. I just want to make sure on Thursday when you come in and we go over the homework, you understand whether your answer is right or wrong. So you, Enzo, you may be correct, but yours may look different. And I want to make sure we all understand that before moving on. All right? Everybody else good? Okay. So speaking of those notes, let's get those out. 7.4. 7.4. And I believe we left off with the geometric mean. We defined it and we did one example. Come on! How are you not coming prepared with staple paper? Don't do one side. Now you break my staple. Anybody else need to steal a 
I'm okay with that when I'm not looking. The only problem I've ever had in my life is we had, this was back when I was in high school and we had to get some type of vaccine, I don't remember what it was. And the, the, per, the nurse giving me the shot said, don't flinch. And then grabs your wrist. Don't flinch, man. Well, what's the first thing you're going to do? And then they say, you shot blood everywhere. It wasn't a fun sight for anybody. So I just looked the other way. But then again, like, if I go on rock and roll roller coaster in Disney World, I shut my eyes all the time. Because I just don't. I'm not. Anyway, okay. So let's keep going. Okay. So the geometric mean. All right. All of these are going to be square roots. All right, all of these are going to be square roots. And remember, recall, it's just going to be the product. So all we would do is multiply 14 and 12 together. All right, and that would be 168. All right, now you do have to simplify. And here's the idea behind simplifying. 14 is 2 times 7. All right, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. All right. Anything that shows up twice is obviously going to come out. Hopefully you realize that when you simplified radical last year, which means four is coming out. And the square root of four is two. All right, which would be two square root of 42. Since there are no perfect squares that go into 42, you would be done. Okay? Which brings us down to number 13, because four times two, 22 times 10 is also 42. All right. Six times 500 is 3,000. All right. I know 100's going into it. Square root of 100 is 10. So it's 10 square root of 30. All right. Now 14 is the square root of 50 and the square root of 2. So this isn't a big deal this year, but it's a double square root. What's the square root of 100? 10. So that would be the square root of 10. All right. As we practice those, if those come into play, all right, we will spend more time on it. All right. So that's what the geometric mean is. Good. All right. How it applies to this unit. How it applies to this unit. 7, 3 to 7, 5. Yeah. Triangle JGH is similar to triangle JHK. JG over JH equals JH over JK. What side shows up twice? Which in the proportion shows up twice? J8. Agreed? So JH shows up twice. JH from vocab last week is the altitude of the triangle. Then the other parts are JG, which is this side, and JK, that side. All right, you with me? JH is the altitude, JG and JK both up, make up the opposite, the side opposite the right angle. What do we call the side opposite the right angle in a triangle? I'm just my uh, All right, so basically what happens is each and every time, the length of the altitude the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the segments of the hypotenuse. The length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the segments of the hypotenuse. All
right. Drawn out. Drawn out. A equals the square root of BC. A equals the square root of BC. So if you take the individual parts of the hypotenuse, multiply them together, and do the square root, you can now get the height of the triangle. Each and every time. Okay? All right. So use the figure it right to complete each proportion. If you can do this, you can do the entire unit. All right? So this combines what we just did with, all right, with what we were doing earlier in the class. All right. So if I was looking at this problem, if I was looking at this problem, the first thing I would do is identify the altitude drawn in, which is C. All right. So number 15, and this is, they're going to give you different numbers that will go through in 19 through 22 in a second. But they want to know D over C equals C over what? All right. So D over C is in that top triangle up there. Does anybody see that? D would be considered the long leg. D would be considered the short leg in that triangle. Everybody good? So that means we have to find the triangle where C is the long leg. Make sense? C is the long leg in the lower triangle, correct? Everybody get that? So what is the short leg in that triangle? Letter E. So D over C equals C over E. And that's where the geometric mean comes from. All right? If I look at 16, blank over B equals B over E. So I look at the one that they give me both, B over E. That is in the lower triangle. Everybody agree that I would consider B the hypotenuse? Everybody agree that E is the short leg? All right. So now I go to the other triangle where B is on the bottom, and that means B would have to be the short leg. B is the short leg in the entire triangle, and the hypotenuse of that is F. So F over B equals B over E. All right. I, I don't know too many other ways to do this, except visually. If you have a different way it's getting you the right answer, go ahead. But to me, that's the easiest way to do it. So if you would, please, why don't you crank out 17 and 18? Hey, McNaughton boys, how'd that Ranger Fire game go the other night? Good? I brought it up. I waited. I gave you a whole weekend. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we're going to fight. Now we're going to fight. We do not say we. You do not play for that. You do not say we. That's why you and you and me have to spend thousands of dollars to go watch the professional game. Because you and you think you're part of the team. You're not. Okay. I'm going to take a moment, walk around, make sure I don't hurt anybody. So in the midst of the conversation, they said, wait, they said, wait, and that's when I went, oh, I can't. Some parent of some poor child is going to fix up for free.
All right, 18, F over B equals B over A. Everybody good with that one? The tricky one is 17. F is a hypotenuse. All right, there's nothing else F can be, correct? With me? So you got to look and say, okay, D is in a triangle. What's the other one that is in the hypotenuse with D? That would be letter A. Everybody good? So now A over D would be hypotenuse over long leg, which means this has to be the long leg of the one that F's in. So that's A. All right. All good? Okay, kind of like a puzzle, right? All right, well, now problem solving. Okay, problem solving. Number one. The first thing you should look for is look to see if you can use the geometric mean to get the altitude. Make sense? That's the easy. So in other words, y is five is the, the square root of their product. Make sense? The y is five. Because it's the square root of 5 times 5 based upon the geometric mean. Good. Now, x, okay, x can be done multiple ways. To me, the easiest way would be Pythagorean theorem, especially with special right triangle. That's an isosceles right triangle, 5 and 5. That means x equals 5 root 2. So when the geometric mean is not there, at least enough to do it, look for a right triangle. So that's 50 and that's 100. Can I use Pythagorean theorem to get that side right there? All right. So I'm going to do 100 squared, which is the hypotenuse. All right. I'm going to do 100 squared minus 50 squared. That's the square root. Of, that's 7,500 square root of that. All right. Fifty squared is twenty five hundred. It's fifty root three. All right. So x is fifty square root of three. All right. Is there possibly a faster way to have done that? Absolutely. Hypotenuse is double the short leg, making it what thirty sixty nine. All right. So the long leg would be x root three. All right, now I'm trying to get Y, which is either the long leg of the big triangle or the short leg of, or the hypotenuse of the smaller triangle. If you try to use Pythagorean theorem, the problem is going to be this is going to be a radical, and it never says to estimate. All right, that's going to be our problem. So if I do short leg over hypotenuse equals short leg over hypotenuse, all right, I should be ready to go. So short leg over hypotenuse in the triangle down here, 50 over 100. When I go to the triangle up top, short leg is 50 root 3 over y. Good with that idea. Okay, you can certainly cross multiply, you can reduce that down to one half, or using proportional thinking, what do I multiply 50 by to get to 50 root 3? Simply what? Root 3. So that means I'd multiply 100 by root 3, and y equals 100 root 3. All right, how you get there is up to you.
All right. So what I would like you to do is work on 21 and 22. Those of you at home, if you have a question as you do, feel free to type it in. Tomorrow, also go to the seven point three solutions up on the booth and answer their group tonight. If you have any questions, we're going to be moving along gingerly. Which one? Both or not both? So, basically, the first thing you look for is to be on your team. So, this whole thing is 60. That part of it's blue. That's the point. So you're good. So you get that, you get out. The altitude is the square root of the product of the altitude. Of the hypothesis. So all you can do is multiply two to each one of the other and do the square root of that. Once you add that and the 20, continue with that and do. Alright, you come over here, same thing. So you multiply those together and get y. And do the square root because that's the geometric gain. So much that that is that's the right over here. Alright, so you use the geometric mean first. All right, 21, x equals 20 root 2, y equals 20 root 3. Everybody good with those? 
I might as good with this being 20. 40 times 20 is 800. Square root of 800 is 20 root 2. That's the geometric mean x. And then to get y, you can just use the Pythagorean theorem. 20 root 2 squared plus 20 squared. 20 squared is 400. 20 root 2 squared is 800. 400 plus 800 is 1,200. Square root of 1,200 is 20 root 3. All right. In 22, multiply 21 and 9, you get 189. The geometric mean is y. Square root of 189 is 3 root 21. To get x, you can then use the Pythagorean theorem. 9 squared plus 3 plus square root of 189 squared. 9 squared is 81. Anytime I square square root, they cancel out 270. 9 goes into 270. Square root of 9 is 3. 270 divided by 9 is 30. 3 root 3. All right. All good? Okay. Tomorrow we'll finish that up and work on 7.5. All right. All right, which hopefully we'll finish by Wednesday. I'll be in the 910 library today for anybody looking for help after school. Do you have like copies of the homework to do tonight? Okay. What do you want to do tonight? Yeah, I'll print it up. Yeah, my printer. I got you. And same thing, what you've been doing is always fine if you want to do that. Yeah, it's just a lot easier. I don't know. It's fine. Bye, guys. Have a good day. I don't see you at school. I'll see you tomorrow virtually. All right. <laughs> And then just double check. I don't know if I crossed any of these. I, I canceled any of these. Yeah, I'll just double check. Yeah, so if there's any that are on this paper that aren't on the posted one, you don't have to do them. Got it. I don't know if I, I don't want to hold you up any longer. Fine. Do you need a pass for a second period? Uh, I may. Well, where are you going? Uh, back to the 910 building. Who do you have? Uh, it's crude. Spanish teacher. Okay. Yeah. Fancy technology trying to impress the young people. <laughs> There's that. There is that. And if you want, I can do the same thing Wednesday yeah, for that. for the cell. I'll have them ready for you. Gotcha. Thanks, no worries. <laughs>